So you've got this Veritune or software and you're wondering how to use it. The easiest way that most people do is just accept the defaults and start tuning. But I'd like to take some time to go over some of the basics that you can do. Let's start. And with anything Apple, there's going to be a lot of swiping, tapping, or tapping and holding. So if we just accept this by the done button up there, it's going to put it in the temporary folder, temporary file, number it, average style, stretch is zero, temperament is equal, and we're at 440, just our standard um, tuning pitch reference. So if we do done, we get to the tuning screen, and it is a needle and a spinner, and this is all user customizable through again swipe brings up standard style temperament measured spectrum veritoner tap the middle to get yourself back you can swipe from the other side and get some other options but let's go back first to that first screen which is under settings here so we're back to settings here we are to back to the other ones and let's call this something else if you're going to have a piano that you're going to return to you're going to want to save this tuning so if you tap on this, you come up with a menu which has, will be, yours will be blank. Um, each one will have no name, like I've got these extra ones down here. The newer update has um, more options than the original. But this is just one way to handle it. Okay, so I have to try and organize it. The temporary ones will go away after a while. So I've done Baldwin, Consoles and Spinets, Grands, Kawai, Steinway, Uprights, Wurlitzer, and Yamaha. This kind of reflects the pianos that I see more often. But so let's say it's a Kawai that we're going to do. And we select that down at the bottom. So now the folder illustrates Kawai. Then you can name that, that file. The little X will get rid of the temporary thing. And I'm going to name this Test. Or let's say it's an SK5. To organize your file in a way that you can find it again. Test, or you could put a client name or however you want to do it. You could put a serial number here. Now, notice that the keyboard's in the way. If you touch return, the keyboard will go away. Now the style, there's average. The built-in ones, there are three. Average, clean, and expanded. But I've found that the custom styles are what's really unlock the potential of the Veritoner. And we can go into this at future times. Um, but you can pick a style and select that. And that all shows there. And then you go done. Now say you come to your piano. And it's like, wow, it's way out of tune. The A is almost quarter step sharp, or you know, and, and you look at your humidity and it's the middle of summer, it's like 80% humidity. You might want to tune that piano a little bit sharper. So let's go back to the setting screen. And down here, you've got your 440 or pitch. You can either adjust the pitch by cents or by hertz. If you touch the hertz, now you notice at the bottom here there's a plus and minus. I could you know, say I want to tune this one at 444 just for a while until the humidity comes down. Then you accept done over here. And then, you know, it brings you into range that you can tune without changing, um, without changing as much of the pitch of the piano. Well, let's go back, put that back to 440. Again, if you click on it, tap it, see how it's blue, and then just touch reset it'll go back to 440. Now if you wanted to do sense, if you just touch the sense, see how they're they're blue now. And if you touch the one under here, you can adjust that by a different amount to one cent, one tenth of a cent, hundredth of a cent. I've actually never used that. I usually just will do between 440, 441, 442, maybe down to 439 in the middle of winter like it is now. But here we are in our tuning screen. And you'll notice this eye right here represents um, basically what the software is going to learn from the piano that's in front of it right now. Now notice up here we're in course mode. I don't really like this this terminology. If you tap that, 
it goes between coarse and fine. And you can actually do just to go to fine tuning in coarse mode. I actually kind of think of this as the learning mode. This, this mode will learn about the piano and adjust the tuning the more it learns about the piano. As you get into fine mode, you'll notice this, this lock screen here. It actually locks the notes, and if it finds a better solution later on, it won't adjust those notes that you've already tuned. So you can end up with a compromised tuning. So best bet is to stay in coarse mode. Um, now, depending on how you want to look at your screen, again, swipe down here under Veritoner. You've got your startup screen, calibration function, but here's your spinner preferences. You know, some people only want to send, you can adjust the coarse tuning, fine tuning, all, all these different things, smoothing, frame rate. Um, so experiment with that. Some people only want a needle, some people want a fat needle, some people only want a, a spinner. This allows you to adjust that however you want to do it. But now see how the, the eye is all colored in and these little um, parentheses on the side means yes I'm listening. If you tap this once those little parentheses go away and some people have run into this trouble it's like well the eye isn't filling up it's not doing anything. Well that's because you might have inadvertently tapped that. Let's get it listening again and you notice it fills as you go And when it's filled up, it represents, I know all I can know about that note, at least is my understanding. Um, so as you return to the piano, it gives you a chance to um, fill it um, to, to recover any of the notes that you hadn't done before. But back to A, the, the way that the Veritoner works, um, so it's following me along. These little arrows here allow you to cycle through. This is only going to follow step by step. This way it's not going to follow at all. I could play anything and it's only going to be listening for B4. Now if you want to change that manually, type that. See how a circle goes around it? Then you swipe up and down. And you can adjust that. If you tap over the octave, you can adjust the octave that you're listening to. So then we're way up here. Um, tap it again. And here's that, that tap and hold I told you about. If you tap it and hold it, while we get a menu, you can go up and down by half steps. You can do all these different kind of uh, adjustments. Oops, I pushed, uh, again, the, the, the circle button over here is the way to back out of the program in case something gets locked up or you get too confused, you want to start over. Now notice instead of start over, I can resume the tuning. Look, I've got this tuning SK5 test that I just did. So you just tap on that and you should be back to where you were before. Let's take a look at the scale on the needle so I can go 10 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents sharp. To adjust this, a swipe this way, see that zoom? We can zoom now, it goes 0, 20, 40, 60, so like a rougher tuning. Or you can zoom it again and there's a fine tuning so you're much closer and the needle will show you a lot more. Well, so thank you. This was part one. I'll continue with part two.